today. So we shall be going through all those programs, short, 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 short. But the little we shall say, they won't be empty in our lives. Yeah. God loves you so much. He loves you so much that he allowed his son to die for you and for me. Ask your neighbor, did he die for you? Because he loved you, he called you. If you don't call yourself, you may be in when you came. It's not because it's because he's been calling you and you didn't answer. And you say, Timbafe 44 hour. He will look for Jesus in the fact. That's why we have come. But Jesus, you see, God has everything wrapped up for us. Even before he created the world. It, it was, it was, it existed from eternity without beginning. And therefore, the message of today really gladdens my heart. I don't know whether you listened to the lessons. Did you listen to the lessons? Yes. What was the first lesson about? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. What was it about? About praise. praise. Then in Jesus, oh, say, this time. About me, my number two, say, Thank you. Thank, 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 thank you. Now, we say that. Without Jesus, there's nobody else. It's not that there's nobody else. 
It's just that I will not listen to anybody else beside Jesus. Why? Because not only is he God and Lord, but he's also my friend. If, this, if you can understand that Jesus is your friend, your life is changed now. Because the problem we have is that I will pray, I will talk, and let me, I like to sir. And therefore, you are, you are drawing yourself away from him. Who is telling you once again that you are a sinner today? Don't you understand the message of the gospel? It's what the Bible says that you are a friend of God. If you are a friend, he's not a friend of sinners in the sense that uh, he lives with sinners. He draws sinners to himself to make them not sinners anymore. To make them the saints of God. Tell somebody, I am a saint of God. Saint of God. Not by what anybody calls you. Look, look, you cannot, you cannot do away with sin in your life. But if you really love the Lord, you will not sin. What did I say? If you really know, love the Lord, if you know what Christ has done for you in your life, do not love sin. Backbiting will, when you backbite, a will bite. You run to the mercy land. Have you moved up? How many times have you run to the mercy land in the last seven days? So the, 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 the first um, lesson talks about praise. And so I will spend the next five minutes about a family that loved the Lord. A family that took him as a father and a friend. And a family that lost a few dear ones years back. My family, my wife's family. Praise the Lord. Yeah. When I married my wife, I took my, my wife's uh, father and mother as my own mother and father. Because I could not understand how you can marry somebody from the family and begin to call them names. I don't understand. They took me as a son. And each time I visited my mom herself, what she said, she looked at me in the eyes, I understood what she was saying. Take care of my daughter. And I looked at her. The, answer, the, the voice of the Lord says, take care of her daughter. And so we have the privilege today to thank the Lord for Papa and Mama. Mama. Let us just spend one second or two seconds, please, and stand up and ask for their souls to impose this and enjoy. We cannot change their destination because they are already gone. But one thing I know is that at least whatever we do is not lost. We don't know the whole story about people who have gone past except what the word of God has told us. But we do know this that when we remember, we are also reminding ourselves that one day we shall go. Whether people remember us or they don't remember us, our Atman, Atman, we will get our one. So let us console ourselves today that one of these guys, I do you that one, was a young man I took as my own boy. Loved him to it. And he was such a guy who was honest and bold to speak the truth wherever he was. He not means words. He tell you what he thought about the issue that was uh, a discussion. 
And that is what makes somebody a Christian. Believe in Christ Jesus. And he took the word of God as his own work. Even where he used to be a textile trader with us, he was uh, John Street. He was their secretary before he passed on. What have we seen? We also remind ourselves that to be in the Lord is a great privilege. And we shall live and live even when we die. Forever we live. We give rest to the The second is about the lesson, the first lesson of today. He gives us the importance and the necessity to praise the Lord. Psalm 96. By the way, Psalm 96 was a psalm that was, was a song. If I would challenge my, my choir people, I would ask them to begin to pray these psalms. Because we find that David, King David in his time, was so anointed of God that he took the, 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 the five books of the Old Testament and he prayed with them and wrote songs. That's where we got Psalms. The Psalms that we read today is prayer and song. In some churches, they sing them out as songs. And so we find that in the different areas in the lives of the Israelites, you know, of course, I don't want to go into history. They came out of Egypt from slavery, and then they went to wilderness for 40, 40 years. During those 40 years, God gave David the inspiration by the Holy Spirit to record in songs all the things that happened from Genesis. And so Psalm 96 was an admonition, 21 admonitions, the necessity for the children of Israel. We are not children of Israel, but we are of Christ now, Abi, to praise the Lord. He says, sing unto the Lord a new song. Not old song, not dead song. It means the new song is a song from the throat. You find that those who are inspired to write songs in our church, in elsewhere, when they are Christian, the song they will, the God the Lord will give them will be songs that they will, they will relate to a particular situation. Maybe they go through trouble times, bereavement, depression. And God gives them some and we begin to write it. So, give us 21 reasons why we should praise the Lord. It says, we should sing unto him a new song. And this new song is not for some people. It says, all the earth. And this new song should be unto the Lord, verse 2. It's asking us to bless his name. To show forth his salvation daily. And declare the glory among nations. Hallelujah. Salvation is not something we take for ourselves. Salvation is saying that someone has saved me, saved you, saved us, saved us from uh, eternal hellfire. But it is much more than that. Save us so that we can also save others who are perishing. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let somebody read to me in verses 3 to 7. Declare his glory among the nations. His wonders among some people. God, because he's great. And greatly to be praised. Yes. They are idols. Yes, go to 10. Yes. Yes. The world also shall be examined. Yes. That we shall not be 
Yes. Thank you. Now, they are to bring offerings. Don't forget, in the Old Testament, they brought offerings, sin offering, trespass offering, uh, thanksgiving offering, and all the rest of them, five different offerings. God directed them. But that's the Old Testament. The New Testament explains the Old Testament. So when we take uh, our worship and our service and behave as if we are the Old Testament, we are robbing ourselves of a lot of things. The, the offering in the New Testament is the offering of a man, the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, they brought things. Pigeons, turtle dove, rams, goats, bullock, call it what. But in the New Testament, our offering is a person. Hallelujah. Our offering is Jesus Christ himself. And his, his death on the cross completes all offering before God. I'm talking of God now. I'm not talking of somebody else. As far as offering is concerned, offering for, uh, for, uh, for, for, for sins that you have offended uh, or committed and so on, it is so that God can accept us. But in the New Testament, he has already accepted me. Has he accepted you? If he accepted you, speak as if you have been accepted. Smile as if you have not no, accepted. Walk as if you have been accepted. Why do you walk with your ass bowed down? Why? Why? Because you are not sure. If I ask there, how many saints here now? How many of you who are saints here? Who are saints? They don't understand. They don't understand. Why? Because they've been calling themselves sinners for 30 years. So it's difficult for Baba Job to come and tell them they are not sinners today. The problem, our relationship with God is not of sin now. Pray for us. Of course, if you commit sin, go on. Anytime you commit sin, ask him, say, I want to repent. Give me the love of you so much that I will not offend again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Because all his words to us, they are love letters. Love letters from a papa who loves us so much that he demonstrated his love for us by allowing his son to die in our place. Do you think he took that word lightly? Of course not. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when we go to verse, verse 9. Worship him in the beauty of holiness. In the beauty of holiness. Yes. How do we obtain the beauty of holiness? You may ask. When we sing to him, when we when we get rid of our self-interest, when we say, Lord, holy God, the and you trust that word you are saying. It's not that you, are, you sing that song now and the next five minutes somebody is telling you some other things that if you take you to Nigeria and take you to a powerful man to do something for you while they are fear you go to, to, to follow that person. Or that somebody comes from Nigeria and tells you he knows God more than what is in this book don't be deceived. What did I say? Tell your neighbor don't be deceived. The God who has saved you, he saved you for a purpose. Saved you so that you can only face him. Don't allow other gods. Don't allow other teachings. Don't allow other doctrines. Which take you or sever you away from him. Because he's a living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Let the heavens rejoice. Yes, let the heavens rejoice. In other words, once we praise him, we magnify his name, what happens? Heavens rejoice. Mark our Lord. Let the sea roar. Let the sea roar. The sea. All the even the sea will roar. Yes. Let the rejoice. Yes. Yes. Let the 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All the things that he created, they will rejoice. Why? Because he feeds them. The plants grow. They bring flowers at the right time. They bring fruits at the right time. The birds, who feeds them? God feeds them. Look, you are more important to God than all these things. I am more important than all these things. Hallelujah. Does that not make you feel more important? Don't feel important by the dress you wear. Because you can't, that and for our virtue. Your beauty is who is in you and how much space you have given him in your heart. Fellowship. 
In other words, you have, by receiving him, you have been sanctified. By receiving him, you have been separated. Sanctified means to be separated to God. You yourself have said, Lord, if we have received him, it means that we have surrendered. And what do we receive of him? We receive his fullness. The fullness of God. Who can, who can explain it? We can, words are not enough to explain the fullness of God. Because he is everything. He is everywhere. Anything you see, anyone you encounter, encounter them as you are encountering God. Because once you know that the Holy Spirit that God has given you has enabled you to connect yourself with that person, is next to you, next to you. With that person you are thinking about. With that person, even he who hates you so much that he doesn't want to see you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are people who would not even want to see you. Have you more up? But how do you know? Where are you, Chef? Number one. I'm asking now. How do you know somebody doesn't like you? Number one. Somebody might got a message which might be true. Number two. He might have done something about you or said something behind you. Am I correct? Yes. Or you might have asked something he has said, supposed to have said. One in one goes away, away, away. From two to three to four, third uh, line. So by the time the subway subway comes back to you, it has been enlarged. The only call you that your nose is too big. Then by the time the, the news comes back to you, it talks about your nose about your eyeballs, about your cheeks, about even your head. And each time they are saying it, that is the way Satan enters into us. Look at the word of God as a picture. So, as they are speaking, speaking to you, you are painting a picture of that person, you are painting a picture of what he said, you are even seeing the person in the mind of your eye, how you would have said it. Am I correct? Yes. And so when you go to your next friend and say, sit down, I want to tell you. <coughs> What's his that Beatrice? Is there any Beatrice here? Yes. <laughs> it's not your own Beatrice. Yeah, what is that Lawrence Beatrice said? And then you will repeat exactly what was said to you without being there, Abi? Yes. Now, each time you have that picture, put Christ Jesus in that sign. And say to yourself, okay, I'm not going to answer this. Because your mind wants to be polluted. So that Christ who was living in your brain, in your mind, can be pushed aside. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you get the picture now? Yes. Now, Christ who was inside of you, was some people said, is any company just more? And then somebody comes and tells you about somebody who says something, something, something about you or against you. Remove that picture and put Jesus Christ there. Once you can do that, your mind will say, number one, I, I was not there. Number two, you will then be able to, but why do you come and tell me? If you are old and you've received the fullness of God, the Holy Spirit will say, ask, ask her. Why do you come and tell me? Did you defend me there? And say, oh, my dad, that mass of man, you did it. You have probably added to it. That's how it works. Praise the Lord. We are in fellowship with Jesus Christ. And the truth about Jesus Christ motivates us to love others, no matter what. Let somebody, I love others, 
no matter what. Face the your next person and tell me. Wait, 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 Look, the words you speak, hallelujah. The words you speak, they are testimony for you. When you are saying, I love somebody, no matter what, the angels are writing it down. And they will give you the power to love that person. Praise the Lord. Now, the Lord Jesus in Philippians is telling us about that Jesus. Let's, let's have the first three verses, please. 15, 16, 17, yes. Yes. But Philippians 3, 15, 16, 17, yes. 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 Thank you. Now, he says, be perfect. Abi? Be what? Why do you say you cannot be perfect? Abi? Well, if, if I, if, if that's the gospel, isn't it the gospel? He says, be perfect. Be perfect as your father is perfect. That perfection does not belong to you. It's God who will supply you the perfection. It is a gift. And you can say, then you are alone. That's what you are saying. Because God does not see you as you see yourself. That's the, 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 the beauty of it. The way you see yourself because you know yourself. You see yourself, but God does not see you like that. God sees you when you throw the person away into the beach with your eyes. God sees you, but He knows that you will change. He, he, he gives you the Holy Spirit to help you to change. But to why change you? <laughs> it means you turn your back against Him. But each time you, you say, Nico. So, Jesus Christ is the one who orchestrated our lives. Who is saying, Receive my spirit? It's not spirit of egg or yolk, it's the spirit of the living God. And he's saying that with this spirit, you will be perfect. Even when you sin, repent. And when you begin to see the Lord and His glory and His beauty and His might and His power and His direction and His leading, He fills you up through and through to the point that He says, He fills us. All is God who is all and in all. He didn't say in the black person or the white person. The disease say on the Yubo man or the Yoruba man or the Ghanaian. He says all in all. In other words, in this church, whether you call it Methodist or Celestial or whatever, where Christ is named as the head of the church, he will rule. He will rule and he will reign. His reigning is his reigning power inside of us to conform us, to change us to hold us, to direct us, to fill us, to guide us, so that we will see with his own eyes. Anything we see, we see the eyes of God. Anything we hear, we hear from the ears of God. But they are not audible. Sometimes they can be audible. But it is in your spirit. Hallelujah. Now this Jesus has been humiliated. What did I say? Has been humiliated. Where and why was he humiliated? And by what the Jews did not know him. And that is why 
Herod asked him, say, what is the truth? And he says, I am truth. He is the truth. Because what he says is from the throne, because he was God. Then he seated now. He is the one who seated us in heavenly places. He has seated us. We don't stand. And talk like that, your gulon did it. In the throne room, we are sitting with him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are doing what? We are sitting. I'm seeing myself now sitting there. Can you see yourself? Yes. See yourself sitting by the throne. And you ask you, Sister Deborah, what have you seen? That's how much she loved us. Don't condemn yourself. Don't put yourself behind. When there's anything to do, come forward and do it with a pure heart. Don't expect any reward any thank you from anybody. I tell you, keep your head down. You will not come back. You will not go kill me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says we should have joy in our hearts. Go, go into 18, please. Yes. 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 Go on. Yes. Yes. Now these are people who don't know God. Their God is in their belly. What does that mean? They're not what. Them or we pay, and you don't bomb the law. Stand firm with him. Stand firm. Thank you. Let us stand firm. Let us hold on to him because he's sure, he's trustworthy, he's dependable because he's the one who has assured us. So, if we see people amongst us who have not measured up yet to our own standard, leave them up. Don't condemn them. Because when you got that, be true or one. Praise the Lord. He's the one who has redeemed us. Because he left heaven to redeem us. And to reveal the heart of God to us. The heart of a servant. He served us as God's servant. His king is the Lord. He continues to bless us. Amen. Can we stand up, please? <coughs> In the next few minutes, let us ask the Lord to fill us with the Spirit in a new way so that we can sing new songs. So we can join in His name. So that we can become what He has created and called us to be. In life and in living. Father, we thank you for your word today. We thank you for your love letter. We have received this word with thanksgiving, with praise and all worship. Feed us to overflowing. We do not want to be empty, Lord. Fill us with your spirit. So that we can love you above all things. Amen. So that we can cherish you. Amen. So that we can spread your love to others. Amen. So that you can nourish us. Amen. We thank you for your living word. Amen. That nourishes and builds us up. As the body of Christ. Free from stain. A body that is perfect and perfected.
Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.